Welcome back folks and the topic of today's video is going to be enthalpy. Now enthalpy is a new thermodynamic function for us. We're going to represent it as a capital H and enthalpy as a working definition is going to be heat measured during a process at a constant external pressure. All right. Now the formal defini definition of enthalpy is given right here. The formal definition says that the enthalpy H is equal to the sum of the internal energy of the system plus the PV work associated with the system. Now, we also know here that U, or internal energy, is equal to Q, or heat, minus P delta V. Okay, so I can make this um, substitution in here for U, and what I get is enthalpy is equal to Q minus PV plus PV. So you can see what happens here is that PV terms are going to cancel each other out. So as a result, H is equal to Q measured at constant P. So I can say that H is equal to Q, and we'll put a little P down here to signify that that's going to be at a constant pressure. All right, so again, whenever we talk about P times delta V, we assume that the external pressure is going to be constant. So that's the assumption we make here as well. So what this really means to us in a calorimetry context is that heats of reaction are interchangeable with enthalpies of reaction. So if we see a heat of reaction, we can assume it to be a enthal an enthalpy of reaction for the purposes of this course. Heat and enthalpy are going to be one and the same. All right, now another thing that I want to introduce is this concept of a state function. Enthalpy is an example of what we call a state function. And in thermodynamics, any quantity that's given a capital letter, that would be things like enthalpy, internal energy, pressure, volume, temperature is another good example of one. Any of these things are called state functions. Now what a state function is, is that's going to represent a process that's going to be independent of pathway. Now let me give you a basic definition of what I mean here. Essentially, if I wanted to uh, make a trip from Chippensburg to Chambersburg, there's probably 50 different ways I could do that, depending upon the roads that I take. The point is, I know I start in Chippensburg, and I know that I end in Chambersburg. Now, for a state function, all I need to know is where I started and where I ended. In other words, I need to know that I started here in Chippensburg, and I need to know that I ended in Chambersburg. That's a state function. If I've got a non-state function, that's signified by a lowercase letter, such as Q, okay? Q, where there's no pressure dependence here, is a non-state function. That means that the pathway is going to be process dependent or pathway dependent, okay? So in that case, I would need to know exactly how I got from Shippensburg to Chambersburg, exactly what route I took. So I need to know more information about the process if I'm talking about a non-state function. Okay, so the nice thing about a state function, like enthalpy here, is that all I really know or need to know to calculate an enthalpy is an initial enthalpy and a final enthalpy. That's all I need to know to calculate the difference. So a delta enthalpy is just going to be for a given process, the difference between the final enthalpy and the initial enthalpy. And we've calculated volumes that way and also temperatures that way. So in just a moment, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about the properties of enthalpy. So one thing I wanted to mention is that enthalpy is going to depend upon several variables that are important to us. And these variables that we care about are temperature, external pressure, and molar concentration. All right? So one way we can keep track of this is we can actually define an enthalpy or an enthalpy change occurring under what we call standard conditions. If we do that, what we're doing is we're calculating or determining a standard enthalpy value. Now, when I say standard state conditions, what I'm doing is I'm setting conditions of temperature, pressure, and molar concentration if I'm in the condensed phase, all right? So anytime I'm talking about a standard um, enthalpy, I'm going to represent that with this little zero or not sign up above the H there. So anytime you see that, you know that's going to be a standard enthalpy of some sort. Okay? So what are standard temperature, pressure, and molar values? So that means 
Anytime I measure an enthalpy or an enthalpy difference, I'm going to measure it at 25 degrees Celsius. I'm going to measure it at an external pressure of one atmosphere. And if I'm talking about a condensed phase, I'm going to make that measurement at one molar concentration of the species of interest. Okay? So these are my standard state conditions at which I will calculate standard enthalpy changes. All right, so let's take a look at an example of a very specific kind of enthalpy. And this is the kind that we might measure, for example, in a bomb calorimeter. So I might want to uh, measure a standard enthalpy of combustion. All right, so if I were to do that, I'm going to have to do that under standard state conditions. Now, it's a hard thing to directly measure, and there are ways of actually extrapolating to these values that we won't talk about. But the point is, if I'm talking about an enthalpy under these conditions, these have to be at standard state conditions, as I've defined over here. So if I want to calculate an enthalpy of combustion standard state, that means that enthalpy has to apply to 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure, and in this case, the molarity doesn't really matter because we're talking about a gas phase reaction. All right, so if this is the case, I would have to write my um, combustion reaction this way but again, I'm talking about each one of these things being under standard state conditions. And the important thing to remember here is that the phase has to be the phase we'd expect to see at standard temperature. So at standard temperature, um, CH4 is a gas, oxygen is a gas, water is a liquid, and finally CO2 would be a gas. Okay, so this is the actual equation that I'm talking about. The other thing that I have to make sure of is that I've got it per mole of the thing that I'm burning. Because I'm talking about the delta H of combustion of CH4. So I always reference this per mole of CH4. So I try to set the stoichiometry up in such a way that I always end up with one mole of the hydrocarbon here. Okay, so that's one type of standard enthalpy we can talk about. Another type that we're gonna talk about as we move toward the end of the chapter is gonna be a standard enthalpy of formation. Now, that's going to be defined as the enthalpy change associated with the formation of one mole of a compound from its most stable forms of its component elements as we find those elements under standard state conditions. So let's take a look at an example of this. If I wanted to do a delta H of formation of water, I could do that. My delta H of formation, standard state, so I'm gonna put the little knot up there, would correspond to this particular equation. Now again, I'm making one mole of water, okay, so notice that the coefficient here is one, and I'm gonna make it from its elements as I find them under standard state conditions. So that's the combination of hydrogen and the gaseous form, because that's how I find it under standard state conditions. Oxygen is also a gas under standard state conditions. And I have to put a one half coefficient in front of the oxygen to make everything work out, so that I can make one mole of my compound. Okay, so that's coefficient one in front here. Now, this particular delta H of formation has a value that we can look up, and it turns out to be equal to minus 285.83, and that's going to be kilojoules per mole of water that I form. Okay? And it makes sense that when we think about this, because this is kind of sort of like a combustion reaction, isn't it? It's hydrogen gas reacting with water. That's going to generate, of course, heat. It's an exothermic reaction to get my um, mole of liquid water. And that's going to be a negative sign in front because I know that's going to be an exothermic reaction. All right, so next time in class, we're going to do some more work with these various enthalpies and see how to use them in calculations. So we'll see you then.